I, like many of you, spend quite a lot of my free time on YouTube watching videos about bikes and all sorts of random stuff. Um, one of my favourite channels is Spindat. I'm sure a lot of you already follow him, um, but uh, there was something he said in a video really recently that kind of resonated with me. I am not a fan of old school drivetrains. I don't really like them, but I do love eight speed stuff. Eight speed stuff can just be like, kind of not doing that great and a little bit broken and crappy and it still works really great, which I love. So today's video is very much about that. What drivetrains do I love and what drivetrains would I suggest you get for your next resto mod bike build? That was a trick sentence. Now, this is not gonna be as complicated and as in depth as you might think. This is kind of just an overview of some of the ones that I really like. And there's kind of like just three five four there's a few that i regularly use uh, and uh yeah let's get to it so number one is actually and these are in no particular order um is the one that is on it already most of the time the one that comes on the bike is fine if there's a retro bike that you're going to turn into a commuter it just probably needs a real good cleaning a bit of tweaking and it'll be absolutely fine anything that um uh, that is on one of the kind of known bikes you know like your rock hoppers and your gts and your saracens any of those kind of like more popular desirable bikes probably gonna have a group set on them that are fairly good it'll probably be ratty it needs a good clean but like it's gonna be fine if you're on a tight budget just use that one simple as that the next tier, if you like, are kind of the new old stock ones. I really, really, really enjoy buying a really terrible derailleur that's been sat in warehouse for 20, 30 years that nobody wanted back then uh, and buying it and putting it on a bike. Kind of like the one I did on the Dynamax recently, that rally Dynamax thing that I made um, that you guys really liked. Uh, the video is above or below so it's somewhere right now uh, but that one is uh i want to say it was like a sun race or something or maybe shimano it was a really kind of like budget entry level derailleur cost me like 10 quid it's like six speed or five speed six speed um and it it's fine like it's nothing special but it kind of made the bike and it runs really smoothly and it's a really, really easy to set up and maintain. So if you want something like that, there's just a few gears just to kind of get you going. Again, commuter style builds, it's kind of perfect and well cheap. Now, a derailleur that's kind of in line with what Spin that had been saying. My probably go-to and potentially my most used derailleur is the SRAM X3. Which this one? Uh, I, I've used these a bunch of times now. Um, they are a seven or eight speed derailleur, so you can uh, use it for either. Uh, you just need to get the different derailleur, or sorry, a different shifter, depending on the speed you wanna go for, and obviously cassette. Um, uh, and they generally, you put them on the bike, and they just work. You don't really need to do a lot of messing around. Uh, you just literally have to mess a, bit, a little bit with the limit screws to make sure it's the right position for the the, uh, the cassette you're using and the spacing. <clears throat> and that's it. They just work. I've had these on multiple commuters now, um, especially through the, uh, the winter seasons. Uh, the uh, hard rock that uh, I built a couple of videos back, or maybe the last video, I, I've lost track of what I've been doing recently. But uh, the hard rock, which is again linked on the screen, um, that one, I purposely put this derailleur on that bike because I know it works well when it is full of grime and gunk. That hard rock is my winter bike. It's gonna be through all the cold, wet, dirty seasons um, and uh, it will probably last without me having to clean it at all or maybe once it'll be fine they're really really good on the back of that if you want something maybe just a little bit more speed a little bit more range range not speed the speed thing's the same isn't it but the the range is um is actually the x4 i really quite like the x4 for actual mountain biking and the x4 is a nine speed derailleur which also does eight as well again the shram ones are kind of like quite easy for both um and um those ones that one i've had on again quite a few bikes i'm also gonna i have one to put on another bike soon as well um i really rate them they're probably 
a little bit more forgiving and a little bit quicker with the shifting. So if you want something that's gonna actually be for off-roading, something where you need a little bit more agile, then that's the one. The, the X3 is kind of quite slow shifting, not slow, slow, but just like toddling along, changing gear, as you go up you know that sort of thing but if you're kind of like mid climb doing something a little bit sketch you need to get in another gear really quick the x4 is way better for that sort of stuff and usually about five or six quid more i probably said before like the x3 i think i usually find them for about 12 quid on like chain reaction and stuff like that in the uk um the x4s about 20 quid 25 max um, and then uh, the shifters for both derailleurs are probably around about 10, 12 pounds max, sometimes cheaper, depending on where you look and if you're willing to shop around. Uh, sorry to interrupt the video, uh, just a quick one. Uh, whilst we're talking about derailleurs and stuff, a lot of these times you build one of these cool bikes with derailleur, you've also got some of that lovely crispy anodization on that chain ring. Uh, so this is a, a little plug of my favorite stickers, the hypnotized by the anodized. Uh, these are great to put on your bike if you've got one of those lovely bright colored chain rings or even some other just bolts and some cool stuff. And there's also, these ones are really popular at the moment. These are the transparent stickers. So if you want me to doodle on your bike, you can get one of these and stick it on down tube or something, um, or your face. But you can find those at saveoutbikes.com, which is just this link here. Um, sorry, back to the video. And then my very kind of last one that I'm gonna mention and, and probably the, the, the most expensive, probably the most expensive. If you want to buy a modern derailleur, and I don't know why I'm doing that because it is a modern derailleur um, that works quite well on retro bikes, I would go for the Advent X by Microshift. I've used this on, again, multiple bikes now. Um, it is a really cheap way of getting a, a big range cassette and a clutch. So for any of those kind of like retro builds you're doing that you want to actually go proper mountain biking, off-roading, uh, the rock hopper um, that I did quite a few bikes back, um, I actually took that to Swinley Bike Park um, and lapped it up. Like there was no hills that I needed to struggle with um, and then on all the downhills and that, I never dropped chain. The clutch is really, really, really good. This one will set you back a little bit more. Um, it's one of those uh, group sets that if you keep looking around, especially in the UK, um, you probably will find it cheaper. I believe, to be honest, in, in America, for my uh, uh, US fans, um, they are a little bit easier to find and sometimes a lot cheaper there. But in the UK, not as many people actually stock them, annoyingly. Um, so they often do end up spending a little bit more. Um, but the cassettes are range from, like I've picked them up for 30 pounds, but you, they're usually 50 to 60 pounds. Um, the the radios probably about the same. I picked one up for twenty five pounds once. I put two up when it was twenty five pounds, uh, but they're no, normally about fifty sixty pounds. Shifters about twelve quid, no matter when you buy them. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all you need, really, isn't it? But I highly rate them. I think they they work really really well. Um, they shift really well, and they're also really easy to maintain and put on the bike. I do find that, that if you if they do if they are completely with the radio in particular is completely clogged up with crap it's not going to shift that great but you'd kind of expect that um if it was using it on my commuter i probably wouldn't want to use one of these because one you wouldn't need it anyway but it's too much range but also like it is you, know, you do need to like actually clean it every now and then um just to kind of keep it running nice and smooth but i wouldn't say you have to it's just you know good practice i realize i'm now talking about maintaining and cleaning bikes are uh, on a video which is inspired by Spindat, who is the king of not cleaning bikes and keeping them grubby, which I, I appreciate. I think they look great. I love mud on a bike. It makes it look like it's been used instead of just put on a wall. They're meant to be dirty. But I suppose one more thing, uh, just for good measure, there's nothing wrong with single speed. I love putting a uh, single speed on like a retro mountain bike, especially if you're commuting. If you live somewhere like me in London, like I ride up one slope. I wouldn't call it a hill. Um, so like single speed is actually perfectly fine for what I do. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun and it's super, super easy. If you're getting into building bikes and you don't know much about their ideas, and it's probably why you're watching this video right now, um, try single speed first and then once you've kind of got the hang of like chain lines and kind of getting everything kind of like going like that then you can start moving on to derailleurs but like at the same time don't be scared of derailleurs for a long time i was i was like i can't just buy a derailleur and a shifter and all the bits and pieces you need 
and then put it all together like it's insanely hard um, but it's it's not it's one of those things you just need to make sure you take your time have patience with it and then just tinker away um, shout out to park tools and their YouTube channel because everything I know about derailers I probably learned from one of their videos um, so go and check that out if you want to learn more about actually making derailers work I think that's it if you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to give it a like down below. Um, and also, if you have any suggestions when it comes to the railers, um, uh, your kind of top buys, I know that I mainly focus on SRAM and um, uh, Advent X or the uh, MicroShift. Um, there is a company you may have heard of called Shimano who make hundreds of thousands of different derailers um, and uh, there's lots and lots of really amazing ones good budget ones that they make i don't personally use them that often so that's why i didn't mention them so i don't know so if you know more about shimano why don't we talk about that down in the comments for people that uh, want to know more about that and uh yes if you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, uh, and you can't wait till next week, this one here is a particularly good one. That is me probably building a bike, I reckon, and doing a derailleur and all that. See you next week.